All right, Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, one of the most important laws in physics. In fact, it is one of the four Maxwell equations that form the very, very basis of electromagnetic theory. Just have one concept in here, but several applications for you. I'm going to start off with a demonstration. This is a demonstration of Faraday's law of induction. I hope you remember this demonstration because it's a very important one in the history of physics. What it demonstrates is that a changing magnetic flux through a coil of wire produces an EMF, namely a voltage, in that coil of wire and a current in the coil of wire. This is not something that's, uh, that people come across every day. But it's the basic principle behind uh, generators, the alternator in your car, um, et cetera. So we can generate electricity by changing the magnetic flux, the amount of magnetic field that penetrates a coil. So what I have here are three separate coils of wire, one with uh, very few windings, one with about double the number of windings, and one with approximately quadruple the original number of windings of wire in this coil. I also have a, and this is a galvanometer, it just measures the amount of current in the wire, er, in the coil. I also have a magnet, uh, north pole and south pole, I'm going to be inserting the magnet into each of these three coils of wire and we'll be watching the, the black needle here in order to, um, to demonstrate the presence of a current in these, in these wire loops. So starting with the small one, if I move the magnet into the wire loop, you saw that as the magnet was moving into the wire loop, the needle bumped up positive. But now the needle isn't moving at all. And this is a very important bit of Faraday's law. There's only a current when there's a change in the magnetic flux. It doesn't care how much magnetic flux there is through the coil. Right now there's a lot. All that magnetic field is through the, 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 uh, the loop. What matters is when it's changing. So now I'm going to pull the magnet out of the coil and what you see is that while the magnet was leaving the coil of wire the current was negative so we get an opposite effect um, and we'll talk a lot more about that the the effect is proportional to the number of windings in the loop of wire so we should see a bigger effect through this loop and uh, finally for the, the third loop so we definitely saw uh, a bigger current, went all the way to the maximum and minimum, and then I think we'll, we actually pegged out here. Uh, it went beyond the maximum this uh, galvanometer will measure. But again, a changing magnetic flux in a loop of wire causes a current in the wire and um, that's Faraday's law of induction. Currents are produced by changes in the magnetic field. The current in the coil is called the induced current because it is brought about by a changing magnetic field. And the EMF that generates this current is known as the induced EMF. It's very similar to the induced EMF for, a, for the motional EMF that we talked about. So you can uh, also induce an EMF by changing the area of the coil. So if we, if we um, take this loop of wire and pull it this way, then the area gets smaller and you can induce an EMF that way too. So there's two ways to do it. You can change the, the uh, strength of the magnetic field through the coil, or you can change the area of the coil, or in fact, as we'll see in one of the examples, you can actually change it by 
um, changing how much of the loop is in the presence of the magnetic field. You're entering a magnetic field area. And the production of this induced EMF is called electromagnetic induction. It's important in uh, cruise control. The, uh, when you set your contru cruise control, there's a, there's a little magnet in the drive shaft that rotates and changes the magnetic flux through this sensing coil. And that change in flux, magnetic flux, through the sensing coil is, uh, produces a current in the coil that goes to a microprocessor and then that controls uh, a servo mechanism that tells your engine whether to speed up or slow down. At the heart of it though is Faraday's law. And here is Faraday's law. It says that the EMF, average EMF induced in a coil, measured in volt, remember an EMF is a voltage, that that EMF is equal to the negative of the number of loops of wire in the coil. So if you have just one circle of wire, then that N would be one. If you have it wound around 10 times, N would be 10. That's N times the change in magnetic flux in the coil measured in Weber's. So we're talking about a change in this flux divided by the elapsed time. So uh, say that with me, E equals minus N delta phi divided by delta T. All right, here's the relationship between the motional EMF and the magnetic flux and Faraday's law. Um, here's the motional EMF, VVL, for uh, a case of, of a bar moving to the right, just the very case that we talked about before with the bar moving through a magnetic field. And uh, this, the velocity is the distance, x minus x naught divided by t minus t naught, b and l come along for the ride. We um, take the l into, we, we distribute the l. So we've got x l minus x naught l. Well, that's the area, the difference between the two areas. And area times the magnetic field, that's flux. Remember that, that the flux is B times A times cosine of the angle between. And in this case, the angle is one, I mean zero. So the cosine of zero degrees equals one. And we get that this is then the change in the magnetic flux. So BA is the final flux, uh, BA0 is the initial flux, and this is the change in the flux divided by the time. I haven't worried about the minus sign, but this kind of shows you how these two are, are related to each other. Let's do an actual example. Coil of wire consists of 20 turns, so that's N, each of which has an area of uh, this area. The magnetic field is perpendicular to the surface, so here's my coil. Magnetic field is perpendicular. Let's say it's into the board. And the magnetic field is given 0.05 Tesla. And 0.1 seconds later, it has increased to 0.06 Tesla. So we're starting off with a magnetic field that's 0.05 Tesla. A tenth of a second later, it's 0.06 Tesla. And we're wanting to try and find the EMF in the loop. Well, this is uh, the formula, this is Faraday's law. Um, we're gonna put in the, the, magnet, the final magnetic flux, BA cosine phi, the initial magnetic flux, that's the final minus the initial, that's what that delta means, divided by delta T. And then we factor out A cosine phi from both of these, so that comes out here. Then we'll end up with uh, this mess in front times B minus B naught over delta T. Well, we have everything now. N was 20. The area was 0 0.0015. That's this one right here, uh, square meters. 
the angle is zero, we're told they're perpendicular to each other, and then, well, and by per perpendicular I mean that the, the coil, here's the coil of wire, is in a plane that's perpendicular to the magnetic field. That means the normal to this plane, which points out of the plane, is in, uh, makes an angle of zero with the magnetic field. So that's the cosine of zero. This is the final magnetic field. This is the initial magnetic field magnitude, and this is the time that it takes. So that means that you're going to get, during that amount of time, a voltage, an EMF, of th 3 times 10 to the minus 3 volts. Uh, another example, a uh, permanent magnet is moved toward a 320-turn solenoid. Solenoid is a, a cylindrically shaped um, windings that form the shape of a cylinder. And the magnetic field increases uh, from 0.05 tesla to 0.75. Um, this calculation is, is actually quite similar, except um, we have to actually work out the area. We're given the radius of 0 0.0. 0.035 meters, and we need the area and what's that area going to be? Well, it's the area of a circle, area inside of a circle, area of a disk, that's pi r squared. All right, so Here's the, th we're just looking at the absolute value here. We're not worried about the, the actual sign of the EMF. We just want to find its magnitude. N is 320. Uh, the amount of time is 0.75 seconds. And then we have to know what the change in the magnetic flux is. And the amount of the change is that the, f the magnetic field inside the solenoid increases from zero. Sorry, I actually read that wrong before. The uh, magnetic field inside the solenoid increases from zero to 0.5 tesla, and this is the amount of time that it takes. So the initial magnetic field is zero. And if there's no magnetic field initially, then there's no magnetic flux, because the magnetic flux is proportional to the field. So this is our final magnetic flux, 0.5. Remember, the magnetic flux is BA cosine phi. Here's the B. That's the final magnetic field times A. This is A pi times r squared times cosine of 0, which is just 1, uh, divided by 0.75 seconds. So that gives uh, 0.82 volts. So that's a couple of examples of Faraday's law. Uh, why is it, where is it important? Well, you guitar players out there can rest assured that Faraday's law will come to your aid. And um, if it weren't for Faraday's law, you would not get any sound out of that electric guitar, at least any amplification of the very weak sound that they produce. How do they work? You see these little metal, uh, they call them pickups. They're little, just little um, metal pickups. And, and this is a blow up of what it looks like. Here's the string shown in the kind of grayish blue um, rod along here. There's a permanent magnet at the top that shows at the top of the pickup. And then down below it, there's a coil of wire wrapped around that permanent magnet. And so what happens is while that string is vibrating back and forth, the, the, the guitar string becomes magnetized and that changes the flux, magnetic flux through this coil. And through Faraday's law, if you change the magnetic flux through the coil, you're going to get a current in the coil. And this current is then measured and sent to your amplifier and, and, uh, and amplified. 
um, playback of a tape deck. We talked in an earlier chapter about how, how you actually go about recording onto a magnetic tape. Here's how we're going to pick up the recording that's already on there. So you've got a tape that's been recorded, you're playing it back. So this is the, uh, the magnetized tape down here, and it has little regions of north and south poles, little magnets that are inscribed in it by the recording process. And what happens is that when these pass by the, re the um, recording head, I'm sorry, the pickup head, the pickup head is a, a horseshoe, well, actually round shaped magnet with a, with a hole cut in here, then that changes the magnetic flux through this coil and sends the signal to your amplifier to, uh, to be amplified. Another example is a microphone. When you uh, sing into a microphone, the sound waves cause that microphone dia diaphragm to vibrate. And a microphone diaphragm is almost identical to a speaker diaphragm. It, it has basically the same shape. Basically, there's a cone that vibrates back and forth. In this case, you're causing the cone to vibrate because you're your, the sound waves from your voice are hitting that diaphragm and it's vibrating. It vibrates back and forth and um, the, and, and this is uh, inside of that coil of wire is a permanent magnet, stationary bar magnet. It's just sitting there and then this whole coil plus the diaphragm are, are vibrating back and forth like that and, and that the current then is picked up in this coil because the, ch the magnetic flux changes through that coil.